morning friends i am aditi bhatnagar working in food safety and standards authority of india since last 6 years today i am going to discuss genetically modified foods or gm foods which is commonly used in day to day language now what are gms or genetically modified foods these may range from animal products which are from animal fed on gm feed products produced from the gm organisms or may also involve the insertion of dna from one organism into another or modification of an organism's dna into other to achieve a desired trait for example in the picture below you can see a fish resistance to froth for example in the picture below you can see a fish resistant to frost and when its gene is incorporated into an strawberry that results in a strawberry resistant to frost so definitely it is proved that genetically modified foods are a benefits to human race but why these foods are genetically modified the reason is that genetic engineering offers a rapid and precise method of altering organisms as compared to traditional methods that are slow and inaccurate for example bt that is bacillus thuringiensis yellow squash or soy which proved to be a blessing to human race the other application of gms are potato modified to produce a beetle killing toxin yellow squash which is widely available across the globe which is modified to contain viral genes that are resistant to most of the common viral diseases it also develops food that contain vaccines and antibodies that offer valuable protection against disease such as cholera hepatitis and malaria one more example is mustard or rape seed which is modified to resist one type of herbicide or pesticide so how does gm and mendel and his peas differs mendel and his peas principle was selective breeding which is slow imprecise and in which modification of genes that naturally occur in the organism was found however in gm the process is very fast it is precise and can introduce genes into an organism that would not occur naturally so how this gm technology is done this can be best explained with the example of transgenic tomatoes in which a transgenic tomato resistant to spoilage is developed from a spoiled tomato dna the picture behind is self explanatory so now once we have discussed what actually is genetic engineering and gm food let us now discuss its benefits it eases the world hunger by development of crops that can grow into marginal soils it reduces the strain on raw renewable resources such as development of drought resistant crops development of salt tolerant crops and development of crops that make more efficient use of nitrogen and other nutrients it also uses low pesticides and herbicides which are beneficial for the soil in which agriculture is done it reduces the herbicide use for better environment and reduces the cost for the farmers it also results in improved crop quality by development of frost resistant crops development of disease resistant crops and by development of flood resistant crops the nutritional quality is also improved with help of genetic engineering by development of foods designed to meet specific nutritional goals now since this is such a beneficial technology for human race let us discuss who uses this technology to the most usa is the largest user of gm technology and genetic engineering crops followed by argentina canada and last but not the least china we are lucky or maybe unlucky in this regard that india is still to make its mark on the globe in the use in the arena of use of gm foods every technology has beneficial and non beneficial facet with respect to gm foods the risk associated are insects might develop resistant to pesticides producing gm crops herbicide tolerant crops may cross pollinate weeds resulting in super weeds which grow widely and at a very fast pace certain gene product may be allergen thus causing harm to human health there may be unintended harm to wildlife and beneficial insects since gm seeds are patented it may reduce the competition in the market and also results in production of suicide seeds suicide seeds are nothing but plants with sterile seeds that are infertile 
or farmers are forced to buy these seeds everywhere. So in the end, how can we reduce that GM foods are good or bad for human race? Well, it depends on individual and how we are using for our benefit. Consumers, government and scientists should be responsible for weighing the benefits against the cost and we as an individual should be responsible for its wide use across the globe or its reduced use across the globe. So after discussion what GM food is, its benefits and its disadvantage, what do we think? Is it good or bad for us? Well, it depends to individual to individual. In the end, I can only say that use widely if used wisely. Thank you.